Play it on Xbox One. Hello and welcome to the Playground Games live stream. We are coming to you live from Playground Games here in Leamington Spa. I'm Mike Brown and today I am joined on the sofa by none other than Mr. Chris Phillips. Hey Mike. Hey, how's it going man? Yeah, not too bad. Always been playing Chris? 
A uh, bit of Apex. Nice, nice. And of course, the man, the myth, the legend, is <laughs> Mr. Torben Ellert. It's a terrible meme. How's hey, it, Mike. <laughs> how's it going, Torben? Yeah, good, good. What are you Glad to be on the show again. Uh, I've been playing uh, PUBG. I, I say playing, I mean skulking around the cement factory getting shot by people that I can't see. So that's kind of <laughs> my, my experience. You're always a valuable team member in PUBG, Torben, don't <laughs> be something like that. Um, anyway, should we take a look at what's coming up on today's show? All right, so first of all, we've got a dig into what's coming up in the festival playlist. We'll follow that by a look at the brand new cars coming this update. We'll then take a break and look at the slideshow. This is a Halloween themed slideshow, so you guys have been sending in your photos. We'll take a look at those. We're going to follow that up with a brand new Horizon story. We're then going to do a bit of a race on a community route. Uh, so I think, I think it's going to be me versus Chris uh, on a community route to see which of us is truly the greatest driver at Playground Games. Uh, we're then going to have a little tease of some future content coming in later updates, a recap of all the updates and fixes that are in this update, and then there will be time at the end, oh, hopefully there will be time at the end, I should say, uh, for you guys to throw some questions at us and others to give you the honest answers. So if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer, if you just go into the chat now on Mixer, say, hey, Tom, he's our producer just off camera over there, followed by your question, and he'll pick out the best ones and put them, on, and put them to us at the end of the show. Right, shall we take a look at the festival playlist? Yeah, absolutely. So let me drive. <clears throat> Okay, so let us see what uh, what we have lined up for us. Uh, I just need—I've been playing a bunch of Switch, so I need to kind of reverse my muscle memory on the <laughs> AB thing. So if I drop out of a bunch of menus, it's because I'm <laughs> pressing the wrong button on it. So of course, <coughs> Halloween is fast approaching, so we are yes. able once again to get some of the cool Halloween cosmetics that haven't been around for a year mm -hmm. now. Yeah, literally a year. So <laughs> um, funny um, that. Yes, Halloween. It only comes once a year. Um, so there's so the theme all up uh, for this update is great rivalries. So it's focusing in on uh, either like very specific, well-known rivalries uh, in in motorsports, or more like conceptual rivalries of. Um, Things like the uh, the X-Raid that was built to win the Dakar at all costs against basically everyone else. And as we know, Mini actually went on to do that for two years running. So it's kind of the, the overall theme that, that carries through a bunch of the stuff that we've got in. Um, we have, in addition to uh, that, a brand new Showcase Remix, um, which is uh, an opportunity to get yet another piece of uh, fantastic Halloween loot, the Haunted House Legendary Horn, uh, by uh, racing some uh, bikes in uh, a buggy in uh, a Showcase Remix that's named most cross purposes because... Um, <laughs> We, we, we have no shame. It's great. Um, so moving on to uh, the first of the new cars in this update, we have the Rossion Q1. Um, yeah, we can drive it later. It's, so it's a really interesting one. It's a North American-made car now, but it's based heavily on the Noble mm -hmm. uh, M400. And, so and I think uh, the Noble, I think that this specific, car, this specific car's heritage goes back to South Africa of all places. Yeah, I believe Noble built them in South Africa, um, mm. and they were when it was Rosion, they were built there for a while, and now I think they're built in the Mosler factory. Um, they're a really cool cars. It's about 500 horsepower, twin mm. turbo V6, Ford yeah. engine. Um, really classic kind of modern look. Yeah. To it. That's uh, a reward for the summer games in uh, summer, as it says in the title. Um, then uh, another um, seasonal uh, championship, this time based on uh, community routes and with the opportunity to win the Zero Uno, which I know is, is a car you, you absolutely Yeah, know. adore it, yeah. Yes. Uh, that's, he, he doesn't <laughs> like it. Um, but uh, it's, it's another example of how uh, cars come back around um, in future updates. If you miss it the first time, it'll be back later. I think the first time around this was on a trial event, so it was actually quite tricky to get, and uh, now makes it a little bit easier. Oh, we got the Nova 69 there as well. Yes, Just indeed. indeed. Uh, the fourth edition. Yeah. Nice. So, That's a great sweet. car. Um, and we have a brand new story in this update, as you mentioned, Mike. We'll be looking at that a little bit later, I think. I can't believe you skipped over, you skipped over a modern race suit grey. Well, it's, it's, it's because I have it. So it's like a Halloween costume. Uh, well, I, I, suppose, I suppose you could be a spooky race. Yeah, you combine it with the, with the skeleton bodysuit, you'd be a spooky race driver. Speaking of the skeleton bodysuit, should we skip forward to autumn? Yes, let's do that. Um, it's a skeleton bodysuit. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, a, a nice combo Something there. else there as well, which I think people might be excited about. Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Devo. Yeah. Yeah, listed uh, as a, a common car there. We're going to try and fix that soon. Um, it, it hopefully it won't be common by the time it, by the time it lands with you guys. Is there only like 40 of them, right? Yeah, there's 40 of them. It started off as a concept car, um, and then Bugatti 
took it to a production run. There's 40 mm -hmm. of them. As Bugatti describe it, it's the Bugatti that can do corners or is built for corners. Mm. So it's so some built, more handling. Builders built specifically not for corners, of course. Uh, pretty much straight line speed. Great. Um, uh, weekly thoughts on here, the uh, Mini X-Raid, the specific uh, championship that I was talking about. As we go forward through it, we have more kind of uh, championships. Another autumn, uh, in autumn, we have uh, another community championship. Uh, it was actually really great. People really took to the, champ the challenge we put out on the last live stream, I built a bunch of content for us, uh, and uh, we managed to build some new championships. There was a trial event you skipped there, though? There was, was a trial event that I skipped there, yes. Ooh, ooh. The Holy Trinity. Yes. Uh, along with another chance at the Remax C2. Yes. Cool. Which is a lot of fun. Um, and not one, but two rivals events. Again, kind of uh, absolutely classic uh, vintage races. I had a go at both of these, and uh, I prefer the Mercedes Benz. It felt like it could actually like go around corners and things. So, what's the theme here? Why the two? Uh, because uh, great rivalries uh, is kind of a carrying theme for the whole update. So, uh, they are two like classic race cars uh, and from the same year if that is I, I always get the yeah yeah they just compete against yes and it's in yeah. 1939 uh, so are they on the same route is it like yes they are absolutely on the same route uh, a circuit up by Bamborough Castle cool uh, the auto union I know that one a little bit better than the Benz because you drive the auto union in stunt mm. driver as well mm -hmm. so chapter two isn't it yes it is uh, the story that we'll be looking at later jumping into winter um, we have uh, the return of uh, the Koenigsegg CCX, which is only one of two Koenigseggs we have in this update. But this is a returning car. Yeah, we have a, a new to the game Koenigsegg as well right. coming. So, uh, spoiler alert, that's coming up uh, a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Weekly thoughts on in the 2005 BMW M3. Don't be skipping these, these solid sorry, gold, sorry. I, I, solid I, I, gold What is it with you them? and uh, BMWs at the moment? <laughs> I, this is not a new thing. This has very much <laughs> been a, a, a cornerstone of my personality <laughs> for a number of years. <laughs> Oh, great stuff. Yes, I mean, actually, the M3 versus uh, the RS4. Wow. Um, executive saloons. Good stuff. Um, uh, return of uh, Showcase Remix um, for, uh, I mean, you built this. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, that's probably undermining the work was done by... Like, well, I mean, yes, the bulk people. of the work was, was, was done by the people who did the original ones, but, I mean, you put yes, this... Yes, my fingerprints are all over the Halo Showcase, that is correct, yeah, and, yes. and indeed this remix. Yes, which is uh, good fun. And there's another championship that I'm looking for, on, is a, another community championship and uh, another one of the unique cars in yes. this update. BMW, Mike. Yeah, I know, that's why that was what the yes for. It's got a big wing on the back of it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And it's uh, really orange. And jumping to uh, spring, we have uh, the other Koenigsegg that you talked about. Yeah, this is a really interesting car. So this was built to compete in GT1 mm -hmm. racing. But as Koenigsegg were building the car for racing, the governing body decided you couldn't have a carbon fiber monocoque and you had to build 350 cars, which Koenigsegg didn't want to do. Have they ever made 350 of a car? They, they've made 350 cars, but they're, but not, they're, not they're very up. limited runs. They're yes. hand-built, beautiful machines. So for them, that wasn't ideal. Yes. Um, so they built one, I think, of these as a prototype. It's a really fantastic car. It takes the normal supercharged engine from back then and takes the supercharger off, bores it out to five liters. So it's about 500 horsepower, I think. Mm -hmm. Really, really great car. That's another one of the uh, cars being added in the series. Yes, it is, yes. Okay, uh, going through uh, the rest of uh, the content, we have King of the Monsters, obviously, uh, Nissan and Porsche. Fun little reference there. Um, yeah, just all up uh, kind of uh, rivalries across the, the championships. And the another final... The R2R Mustang S5. Yes, and, and another BMW, BMW yeah, an 88 Volta edition. That's a great M5. That's great stuff. You sure you didn't have a hand in like picking the cars for this? Because a lot of BMWs. Lot of this this like, it's almost like someone was specifically trying to please me when they picked this stuff, <laughs> which is possible at some point. Okay, uh, should we take a look at the cars? Yeah, go. I, I should, before we jump out, should we yes. just? Uh, I don't think we th we obviously showed them. But I don't think we had a look at them, the uh, the series rewards on the far left. Right, so let's um, go so we have the. Rewards. 2017 Aston Martin Vanquish mm -hmm. again and the Porsche 718. So it's only the second time to get that Vanquish, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Same for the 718, I think. Cool. All right. So you guys missed those previously. This is your chance to get them again. Yes. Get your game on and play them. All okay. right. 
Um, if you want to jump into the car, I will just yeah. remind everybody. Uh, we are hoping to do a Q&A at the end, so if you have any questions you'd like us to answer, if you just go onto the Mixer chat, say, hey Tom, followed by your question, we will endeavor to answer those at the end. Thank you. Okay. I'll just... Uh, yes! So starting off with... <clears throat> Mike's the M3. Favorite. I love this car. Yeah, so th I mean, I think this, all, this holds a special place for all of us, because this was a DLC car in Horizon 1. Yeah. Um, it drove great in Horizon 1, it looked fantastic. In fact, we have a banner in the studio of this and the Mercedes CC63 MG at yeah. Walk Past Every Day. Um, but it's a great car. Um, so this was when, so BMW for the, um, both the E46, uh, the E92 and the current F10 M4, they've all had like a GTS CSL type um, mm -hmm. limited run track special. Uh, that's what this is. So it's got the wing on it, makes a little bit of downforce, better tires much better tr uh, suspension setup for track work, so it's much stiffer. Um, mm -hmm. This thing drives really well. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic it driving fun. car. Um, I should actually pass it over to you. Uh, you have a yeah, good one. Thank you. Um, yeah, this was my, uh, my go-to car in FH1, so I am very happy to see her make a comeback. It's a fantastic color of orange as well. Yeah, this is like the, the default stock color, isn't it? Yeah. What do they call it? Sunburnt tangerine or something? Oh, I've, I I'm, do not have an encyclopedic uh, knowledge of BMW colors. You need Andy for that. I do, I do know a lot of them. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you just sit on the configurator the whole time? I, I, that is one of my main pastimes at home, is to just configure BMWs and then... Well, I suppose I have bought a few, but I uh, <laughs> don't buy as many as I'd like to. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, sorry, white van man. <laughs> Out of the way. Right. Good driving. What's next? Which car should we take so, up? Uh, jump into the My Cars menu. So there's a bit of, of a theme if people haven't noticed already this month, and all the cars are what I would call a track toy. So Koenigsegg is obviously uh, built for racing, the Devo is built for you know, a more corner-orientated Bugatti, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the Rosion, which is based on the Nobles, is lightweight, um, very track, track worthy. So maybe jump in the Rosion. Okay. Um, See, I think these things weigh a thousand kilos, um, so they're based heavily on the Noble M400, which was similar to a Noble M12, I think. Um, so they use a Ford V6 that's um, twin turboed up to 500 horsepower. So that's about 500 horsepower per ton. So it's a fairly rapid little car. This um, Brozion took that kind of core concept and down tonight, down tonight. gave it a bit more uh, road ability so it's got a, a nice interior it's kind of m more luxurious than the nobles were um, Ooh. Ooh. electric electric mirror electric um, mirrors and windows nice. <laughs> <coughs> i mean i'd hope that for a car built in 2013. <laughs> hey man i, I had a 2013 car uh, with uh, manual windows <laughs> It was, it was very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't a BMW. It was not a BMW, <laughs> no. That was a, 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 a black mark on my car owning history. What was it? It was a Vauxhall Zafira. Oh. oh. I, don't, I can't believe I just admitted that. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I, <don't, coughs> I hated that car. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, today's stream is turning into uh, cars with Mike. <laughs> Should we jump into another car? Yeah. Uh, let's have a look it's at that really Koenigsegg. It's small, isn't it? It's very, very Yeah, they're, they are very, very small cars. Um, uh, let's check. I it comes from them being a, a based on a British car. Um, <coughs> obviously, we have quite narrow roads in the UK, so it's beneficial. Uh, if you go back a couple. Uh, there we go. <coughs> so, yeah, this thing drives really well. Uh, so, GT1 car, full slick tyres. Yeah, it is literally a race car. I would normally say a race car for a ro for the road, but this is just a race car. Um, <laughs> are they actually street legal? Uh, well, Kerning's eggs are. This one wouldn't have been. Right. So it's okay. a bit naughty having it uh, well, on the road. But I'm sure Horizon got a special dispensation for it. Yeah. Yeah, the police in Horizon just look the other way. Really? You never see the police, do you? It's weird. <laughs> as much as as fast as people drive, never ever see police at the Horizon Festival. Yes. Must yeah. be budget cuts. <laughs> Yes, yep. not to dig into that one, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, yeah, as I say, this one, unlike all other Kerning's eggs, is normally aspirated. Uh, Kerning's egg back yeah. then was supercharged. Um, so, Kerning's egg way back started with Ford engines. I think it's a Ford 4.6 they used with the supercharger on it. Um, heavily modified, of course. And then 
eventually built their own engine and started using the twin turbo architecture. Looks to be sticking to those corners. Yeah. This is also really light, uh, 1100 kilos. Um, mm. Because Koenig's eggs are so light actually, um, to start with, they didn't struggle to get the weight out of it, which is normally a big issue when you try and build a race car from mm. a road car. So they had the option of making it even lighter and then they have to add ballast um, to get the weight back up to 1100 kilos. So it meant they could place the ballast exactly where they wanted for the best weight distribution. So that if it had competed, it would have been a competitive car, I think. Um, and it didn't compete because they didn't want to build enough to homologate them. Yeah. Um, right. And yeah, I think there was to do with the carbon fiber monocoque as well. They want to move away from that. Okay. Because another interesting fact on it, the monocoque strong enough that technically it wouldn't have needed a roll cage either. Um, wow. But it's an FIA mandate that you have to Ooh. have them. Okay. That is a great fact. Mm. Right, should we take a look at that, that other car? Yeah, that I, think, other one. I think that's probably what people are waiting to see at this point. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry everyone for making you wait. I know what you're here for. Here we go. Ah, the Devo. It's just an eight litre engine. Yeah, W16 quad turbo, 1500 odd horsepower. <clears throat> it's... And listen to that. Whoa, that's a good sound, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a fairly rapid car. So this is the one that can take corners? Yep. Still requires As brake. you go straight off the road. Well, I was testing how little brake I needed. More than that. <laughs> I mean, you have to remember, it's still 1,500 horsepower, so it's going to go fast in straight lines into corners. No, I actually, actually haven't driven this at all in depth. This is my uh, first time driving it. So remind me, how do people get this car, Tobin? So uh, the Devo is 50% uh, in autumn. Okay, so not this week coming, but the week after. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And if you should miss it, there'll be another chance down the line. But definitely get it now because uh, be the, uh, you'll be the envy of people who are devo <laughs> devo <laughs> You'll be the envy of people who skip this autumn. <laughs> No. Uh, oh. Anyway, uh, let's <laughs> 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 enough of away. that. Uh, I think <clears throat> probably that's probably unfair. Let's just have a look at it in a <coughs> Can you pop into the cockpit? Yeah, let's just, I was going to take a look around the outside first. Mm. Oh, look at that. It's got a, uh, got a French flag on the side there, showing off. Those are the wheels that we teased on, on the social media as well. I'm going to guess everybody guessed immediately what oh, it was. It, 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 took, yeah. it took literally three seconds. Um, oh, that's nice. Very nice. Yeah. Let me read those buttons there. What do they do, Chris? I think it's, it's, like a it's climate control, isn't it? Um, <coughs> I've never sat in one of these, so I don't really know what the buttons do. Jeez. And it, it, so you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like most of it's built out of carbon fiber. Yeah, I mean, most of it yeah. will be, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous thing. So about how fast do you think this thing will go? Because uh, oh. it's good at corners, but there was a compromise to that, right? Yeah, so it has got more downforce than a Chiron. Um, but typically, when you try and make more downforce, you'll also make more drag. So mm -hmm. it will lose top speed. Um, okay. I can't remember its top speed off the top of my head. So the Chiron recently in the limited edition form just broke the 300 mile an hour barrier. Um, this will not do that. Okay. Um, I mean, the other thing is when you're trying to build a car for high top speeds, downforce is actually your enemy because you start to build too much tire load. Right. Um, and at high speed, your biggest issue is the tires wanting to pull themselves apart. So if you're adding more load onto it, you're making it worse. So pull the- Pull themselves apart? That sounds like a bad thing for tires to do. Yeah, it's not great. Um, so the Chiron is more of a d downforce neutral or lift yes. neutral car as we okay. call it. Um, whereas this is actively making downforce, so there's there is trade-offs. It does not move off-road as well, does it? It's a decent grip. It's, it's just skipping over everything. <laughs> it's preparing for takeoff. Mm. Hello, sheep. Um, um, uh, is, is there a rally? Uh, is, does it have rally suspension? Yes. You, yes. you can build a rally car out of it. Excellent. I think everything pretty much has rally suspension these mm -hmm. days. Yes. It's a gorgeous thing. Alrighty. Um, Right, next up is the photo slideshow. So we tasked you guys with coming up with some Halloween photos. We're gonna take a look at those right now.
Again, that was an incredible response to that task we gave you guys. Guys, which were your favourites there? I think I'm with Torben on this one. Yeah, the... Uh, well, like, but which one? You, the you... one looking through the shed window. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, the Pennywise, right? But this, I mean, this, this is, this is, <laughs> yeah. this is just That's such yeah, a clever yeah, use of... Yeah, yeah. yeah such, a, such a creative use of delivery header, I think, to, yeah. <laughs> to, to make quite a ridiculous photo, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we definitely didn't expect... We, we expected kind of stuff using the bone shaker because, mm. you know, it's got a great big skull on it. Um, but uh, less so. <laughs> Things like this, we're like, how, how, how did they do that? <laughs> it's okay. I only just realised um, there's a transit van behind it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, it took me quite a while to figure out. That's genius. All right, Torben, uh, we are looking at a brand new Horizon story. Yes, we are. It's, it is uh, northeast, yeah, northwest. Oh, yeah, exactly. So we just uh, zip off that okay, with a cheeky fast travel. Okay, so uh, this is, as you said, a, a new Horizon story added to the game. Uh, a business. Uh, I think we've already bought it. I did. I bought it just before we started. Yes, so. uh, but the, the usual buy-in of 100,000 of your best credits. Uh, in this case, to uh, join Alex in uh, upgrading sleeper cars. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's go in and uh, take a look at the first one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to physics. Uh, um, but a uh, thing that I endeavoured to do the last time we did a story on a stream. Spoiler alert, if anyone doesn't want to know the story, uh, look away duck now. off now. This is a legitimate thing that was <laughs> phrased up and we were asked to do. So I'm, 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 I'm delivering on that now. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> come back in a couple of minutes then, I guess. Um, anyway, so what's going on? T talk to me. Right, so um, it's, it's all built up around the idea of sleeper cars. You're working with, with Alex to go and pick up cars that people love, but they want to be more awesome than they are. Okay. So it's all about you drive the courtesy car that you're going to leave with the owner while you drive back in their car, and Alex and his team turn it into an upgrade hero. Cool. So this is Alex's car, I take this it. Is, uh, this is Alex's uh, absolute piece of nonsense, uh, uh, Cleo. Uh, it's, it's absolutely great. Really, really kind of uh, rolly in like that great fun way. Uh, just, good, just kind of good, good for bothering sheep? Yes. <clears throat> You're really eager to go and, and, and pick up this car, I see. Right, great. Um, yeah, so uh, this is kind of tied into the Upgrade Heroes concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which is, which for, is for the, I mean, obviously I know what it is, but the, for yes. the people watching who are not familiar um, with Upgrade Heroes. So it's a set of cars that we've curated upgrades for. Mm -hmm. uh, they live in a, a section of the menu called Upgrade Heroes. And we thought with the story, well, let's do a backstory for that. So you've come, you've picked up this, uh, this uh, Datsun 510, uh, and you're going to drive it very carefully, because it's not yours, back to the garage, and Alex will do his magic on it. Okay. Able to overtake something. So who's to, who does this belong to? Um, this belongs... Uh, you're, you're diving into the deep law here, Mike. I, well, I don't have my law people Bible. Who don't, people who do not want the law have turned off. So yes. this is the only people left watching and people who want, want the spoilers. So <laughs> people who, who, who owns this data? Uh, wow, you... Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to not be damaging you. It's supposed yeah, to be. I can damage it a bit. It's, I have a whole health bar there. It's fine. <laughs> Just right. don't hit any trees, OK? Because otherwise we'll be doing this chapter again. No, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, Fun, fun, fun story. We were talking about cars that uh, first cars and cars that uh, that we love. The first car that I ever owned was a Datsun. It wasn't a 510, unfortunately, but um, what was it? Wow, it was. Is it a Datsun Sunny? <sighs> yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was tiny. It was great. I loved it. Uh, yes, but let's let's move away. Is that from your that. first ever car? Yes. That's showing your age, that is, Tolvin. Or just how old your first car was? <laughs> yes, it both were accurate. <laughs> Um, okay, so we bring it back, we park it, and then over the course of a day, uh, Alex will do his magic, and that will turn from uh, from a zero into a hero. hero? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Chris, you, you you did these. You built you built all these. Uh, I did. Yeah. It wasn't really Alex. Uh, spoilers. No. He, <laughs> he, he Alex is not a real person. More spoilers. But Chris, Chris is a real person, and. Uh, Yes, well, they're built built by me and Marco, uh, the other guy I work with. The other uh, guy. <laughs> <laughs> or, which, or, or other car handling designer. If, you, if you're going through the auto show looking at the upgrade presets, uh, anything with over a thousand horsepower is actually Marco this time round. Okay. Um, I, so this was actually one I did. So this has the Forza wide body kit on it with mm. the oil cooler out the front, which is a concept I still struggle with because that's not something you want to have rocks and things smash into or someone reverse a people carry into because it'll kill your engine. So this is it's, a cool look, it's a cool look though, it's a cool look. 
this. You know, I particularly like how they just kind of rooted the feeds just up through one of the, one of yeah. the, the, the light wells. Well, you don't need headlights. Yes, well, three. You've still got three. Yeah, that's funny. Um, and the thing that I, I really enjoyed with this story was the opportunity to take cars. And there are a couple in the story that are really quite old and really quite low down the kind of the, the, the PI scale. So you really get a sense of, and we do some things to them that make them completely mad. I think uh, Matt Pickers on the Forza Monthly after us will pick up on a couple of those as well. So it was really an opportunity to take a car and try it out stock and then just see what upgrades can do to these cars. And of course, interestingly, this story actually unlocks every single car as a reward as you level up. Oh, that's neat. So there's so, 10 cars on this story. So what's the, uh, what's the law there then? Is Alex just not giving these cars back after people uh, bring them in to get upgraded? Uh, I, 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 th I think, he's, I think he's, he's, he's probably like 3D printing them out the back or something. <laughs> let's let's not get into it. 3D printing the keys. <laughs> collect. Oh, yeah. Chapter completes. Let's see how you did on that. Oh, I wasn't checking. I didn't think it two stars. I slow down for the roundabout like a like a good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A second exit means straight through. Yeah. Great. Um, so, what do you, what do you think of those uh, of that before and after experience? Yeah, it's cool. It's a really nice idea. Yeah, and I think it really shines a light on these upgrade heroes as well, mm. which are a cool feature, which is kind of tucked away a little bit in the garage, and I think a lot of people probably wouldn't have seen. So, yeah, it's a cool. Feature. And there are more upgrade heroes than just the ten we chose for the story, but uh, they really kind of go uh, across the board. Are we, doing, are we doing another chapter? Sure. All right. Um, then, if you pull up the chapter select, then I would do the Audi. Okie dokie. Uh, right. This is a, it's, a it, it, it's, it's another upgrade preset with, with some really fun visuals on it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think which Audi this is. The Audi. The, the Audi. The Audi. The client is an old Audi, they just putter around town and okay, we're now reaching, the ball was wanted uh, to Charles go off road. I've never played this chapter before, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, should be awesome Turn around when it is safe to do so. Fun story, we actually ended up uh, doing uh, a bit of a rework on some of the chapters uh, for this because uh, just because of, of the of, of, of the fact that a bunch of them were like going in the same direction all at once and we just wanted to shake that up a little bit so we moved some of the chapters around and kind of sent the player in a bunch of different directions each time they need to go and pick up a car. How many chapters are there? There are 10 chapters, uh, 10 cars. Uh, so uh, to unlock all of the reward cars you're going to need, which include uh, a Koenigsegg and a Bentley, uh, you're going to need to three star everything. You don't need to three-star everything to unlock a bunch of them because of the way our influence threads work. Pe people have, have seen this working before, but uh, the really good stuff isn't like stacked in at the end. It's just like um, sprinkled out as you get three stars. Cool, cool. That's what we got. <coughs> that's what we got. Wait, what, what is the Audi? Because I got the impression Tormund didn't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. That's a quite fair. These things are so cool. So it turns out the client doesn't just want to go off-road. They want to go off-road, Group B style. Another thing that was a lot of fun with this was just kind of exploring well, Alex's character and his relationship, particularly with, uh, with his kind of adversarial uh, relationship with, uh, with Jamin uh, in one of the latest chapters. That sounds interesting. Well, I mean, I say adversarial, but it's in it's in that kind of uh, horizon adversarial. So it's like, who 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 has a car that is better at a thing, and everybody wins because the cars win. Right. So I've got to not damage this, but also got to go quick. <laughs> so we're going to damage it by going off road. Okay, okay, just a little lab on. We're still good, still good. Still good, still fine. <coughs> Mind the tractor. Mind the tractor. Uh, we're okay. <laughs> oh. That'll buff right out. Yes. Hey, he's rebuilding it anyway. I'm pretty sure he's going to be changing all the body panels on it, yeah. so it's fine. There we go. Alright, oh, yeah, it's pristine. As we know, was completely mad. But hey, we like mad. 
So we had a poll running in chat for which of the new cars were people's favourites. Surprise, surprise, the uh, Bugatti Devo coming out on top at 45%. And then not the BMW M3. Weird. Um, the, Are you uh, just all of those 20%? <laughs> Have you just been off the side on your phone? <laughs> the Koenig uh, second, second, the M3 in third, and then the Q1 in fourth. So is Alex giving us some exposition? Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. He's, he's, he's talking about uh, how, uh, what they did to it, how they upgraded it, turned it into like a, a classic Audi Quattro rally monster cool. that we can see with like the, the, the big light rig on the front and the, uh, the armored underplate. Uh, and some fun comments about how he, uh, how, he uh, how, how, the, how the client kind of chickened out of uh, riding as a, as a, as a, as a co-pilot huh. uh, because of the nonsense that's about to happen, I think. Chickened out. Chickened out also isn't spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't, isn't spoiled. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean we can't embrace it in the narrative. I mean, good good narrative is the art is the art of the possible, the the, the art of limits. But in this case, it's actually just uh, an excuse to to really take this thing into its into its natural environment. It's a really nice hill climb route for it. Mm. Nice nod to uh, when the massive winged version of this went to Pike's Peak. I'm sure that was an intentional nod by Torben. <laughs> yeah, that, absolutely. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I did a whole bunch of research. You said Pike's Peak, I know, and it's. Uh, yeah, but I, I spent more time researching British Racing Green than, than this. And now it's downhill all the way. And uh, you've got. 45 seconds to get to uh, the destination for the three stars? Yeah, I mean, if I was going for three stars, I wouldn't be taking the, the, the corners. <laughs> um, but no, I want to get a feel for the car, guys. Mm -hmm. like... So earlier on, the car yeah. before had an oil cooler sticking yes. out the front of it. Yes. The thing under the rear wing on this is yeah. another oil cooler. Okay. In a much better yes, place like to put it. Yes, like on the back where it won't get smashed by anything except it get smashed by anything. That's so, Torben, in the uh, deep lore of Horizon <laughs> Stories, yeah. how much does a client have to pay Alex to have their car upgraded like this? So, I think probably it's more about... So, if, if I had to give a serious answer to that question, I would say it's probably a membership thing. It's about being part of, uh, of the Horizon Festival and signing up for slots because the people who are doing it are almost certainly just doing it for the love of it. I mean, the, the, the client would, would pay for parts, right? Whatever they bolted onto it and, 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 and did to it to make it into whatever they wanted, would, the client would pay for that. But it would, be, it would be something that people did for the delight of making these machines and seeing what they could do. He's not mercenary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was two chapters of the 10 and you just uh, unlocked uh, your 510 yes. uh, and uh, made a bit of progress towards the cool. journey. And if you want to see more of that, I believe people can tune into the Forza Monthly stream right after this, where yes. none of the Mr. Matt Pickering will be over in Seattle to mm -hmm. show you some more. Mm -hmm. And uh, to talk about how we built it and sort of go into some depth with it. It's gonna cool. Be all right, next up, we are going to be racing uh, one of your routes. I would love to tell you whose it was, but it's not on my screen down here. So Tom will give me that in just a moment, and then I will tell you whose it is. So we're going to be doing a, a PVP race. Uh, I think you're on that one. Oh, I'm on, on this screen, one. Yeah. Let's jump into a Venino. Uh, yes, it's the Car Geek 09. The Car Geek 09, mm. uh, who has made this pretty cool route that goes around the map and finishes on the motorway. Yep. Which you've seen before, haven't you? No. Yes, yes, I've played it once before, yes. So all I had to make sure it wasn't like rudely shaped or something before we put it on the screen. <laughs> We're on to you guys. Yes. Yes. We, know. We, know. we know the kind of joke to your pull on us. Yeah. Um, so this is a seasonal championship, or it's part of the seasonal championships uh, this time around. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be playing it uh, via, um, as, as a blueprint event. Uh, and for people who were watching our whiteboards, they would have seen a share code uh, that included this route as well. That's cute. Um, yes, we're big on the uh, we're, we're, we're we're big on those uh, on those oh. subtle references. So it's like whiteboard. You mean Top and Tuesday? Yes. Okay, so it's uh, Ferraris versus Lamborghinis. So what did you guys choose? Uh, I have gone for the Ferrari FXXK. 
AKA the Ferrari very, very fast. <laughs> uh, I have the Veneno because... We actually picked each other's cars for this, interestingly. Um, I got so, the lower PI car. So thanks, Chris. So I, I clearly uh, got yes. the better end but of that anyone, any, any, any regular viewers of this stream will know that I need the better car. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Did, who, who won last time? Was it you or Karina? Uh, I won. Yeah, but, uh, it was close, though. Yes. Uh, it was close, but Karina did use a lot of rewind. Uh, Rewind's a feature. Yeah. Mm. Mm. When, you do, when you're doing a competitive, like, lap time based multiplayer, it's, uh, it's not really part okay. of the game, is it? Right, yeah. yeah but no rules were set at the beginning. Oh. Yeah, so no, literally, no rules were set. <laughs> Right, here we go. <clears throat> I think this is a lean in kind of thing. Yeah, okay, so Torben's going to do the shout casting. Yes, um, uh, I will do my, my very best attempt. Yeah, to so do. this is a, a live uh, multiplayer game. Uh, any, any, any game developers watching us will know that doing a live multiplayer game live on stream is a terrible idea. So, so <laughs> lean uh, into that. I'm still amazed you're, we're doing this. We're just going to be watching Chris's perspective on camera, so you'll be watching me out in front. Uh, okay, so just before we launch into it, take a moment to check out the route. As this is not quite a Goliath, but it's definitely in the 10 to 12? 12, 12, 12, 12 miles, I think it is. Right. Also, check out the PI difference. Oh, jeez, such, such a complainer. Right, so off we go. So that first 30 second uh, auto goes there, really being, uh, being, being used to the max to stick to the racing line. So, right, it's gonna I go. I, just, I, I, I can barely see this screen. <laughs> I'll tell you to scooch down onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any of you know if it's going to go left or straight through up ahead? It's going straight through. Right, so up along do it water. Okay, so... A uh, chance for you to, uh, to get some of that straight line speed and catch up there, Mike. Watch the corners. Okay, ooh, 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 ooh. Right. Okay, so it's going all the way up, uh, basically, to the top of the map and then looping around uh, along the far side of Glenrannock and then hooking into the top of the motorway. So that's definitely going to be a chance for the very fast uh, FFXK to catch up. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> I, I, pre I appreciate you uh, plugging me, but uh, I'm already, Chris is already a little dot off in the distance. Uh. I mean, if you like, I can reach over and press the Xbox button on this <laughs> controller. <laughs> I'm just going to keep this back here. Right, OK, so we've got some tight turns coming up ahead here. Um, so I always overshoot one of these coming up. Yeah, so uh, definitely be careful with that. Because the next one I tend to overshoot. Although we're going down the little junction, aren't we? It oh, perfect. Yeah. It makes it a little high-speed high oh, chicane. Oh. Because if you cook that corner, you're going to base it. You're there you're in a house, usually. Yeah. Oh, no, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. You went the wrong way. Yeah. <coughs> that's that's always a thing that's 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 no, part of. Can't ruin this as a contest. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't going to say true. it's a thing that ruins this as a contest. It's it's part of it's part of the fun of community championships because the route you basically need a whole run to learn the route, and then once you've got it, you go back and, and at least speaking from my point of view, I then go back and and actually try to win it because I mean we we, we get to know the the on disc routes really, really well. So what these do is they just shake that up entirely and give us an opportunity to... Ooh. You didn't rewind. I got so didn't we just discuss this rewind? I, honestly, I don't think it's helping me in this situation. Uh, I got no. stuck in a river. Um, Ooh, nasty. Yeah, I, I wish I practiced on this screen first. It's really small. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's like a... Like an eighth of the size of the screen. It's like you're playing play. on, a, on, a, on a 3DS from across the room. <laughs> yeah, and you're literally across the room, which couldn't be further away. Wow. Okay. Right, so down through these tight, tight turns here, and then it's going to be around the back of Glen Rannock. Yeah. You're about two turns behind, Mike. It's very kind of you to slow across, thank you. Okay, so, right. Really nasty S bend coming up here. So, there we go. Okay, so, 
Oh, this corner here. This is. Oh uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's 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 the hard lift out of uh, out of the Glen Rannoch Road into the, the feeder road that leads into Edinburgh. Just it tends to be tricky because you get a bit yes. light over the crowd. <clears throat> yes, and I remember this painfully from World's Fastest because uh, you have to get a you have to go around this corner and just get your speed back. Oh, it's going actually it's going in through Edinburgh as well. I thought it was going to hook straight into the top of the motorway at this point, but no, 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 no. You've got a Gotta navigate Edinburgh first. Ooh, ooh. All right. Okay. So that is going along the south of. So we're just going past Haymarket yeah. now. Um, oh no, that's checkpoint. <sighs> well. Great job, Crater, for, um, yeah, you put your checkpoints going around the roundabout whilst I tried to go through the middle. <laughs> <clears throat> It'd be so interesting to know. It's fairly obvious to go around the roundabout. Yeah, well, your screen's 60 inches, and mine's about three inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry. That's, oops. You might be back with a chance. I think you could stop for lunch, and I'd still be uh, struggling to catch up. Should I do that? Just... No, do not stop. Oh wait, this is the motorway now. This is where you you should be a bit quicker than me. I don't think that's going to matter at this point. My goal is to finish. It's to, to not do an F for this. Uh, yeah, um, watch out for the checkpoint coming out of that one. Yeah, that. I mean, that checkpoint is it, that could have used being a little bit wider and maybe pushed off to the side a little bit. Levels and tips from Mr. Torben out there. And, and and subtly setting up the the improvements that we made to Root Creator and the last update that would have been really good at just kind of uh, fixing that as you went through. Right, and now it's just flat out all the way to the bottom. So, anybody know the share code for this route? Uh, we can pull it up when we're done. I, I don't remember the nine digit code off the top of my head, Mike. You don't commit to Tolv on Tuesday enough. I, I know, I know. I, I should literally be able to reel it all off. There we go, finished. This was rubbish. <laughs> yes. Um. The, the Venn diagram of, of, of reasons uh, reasons to lose. <coughs> don't want to do that player's game anymore. <coughs> you didn't DNF though. No, it wasn't too bad in the end, I suppose. I think if people had seen my, my feed, they'd have seen how, how awful that truly was. <laughs> Shall we pull up the uh, shack out for this? Uh, great, let's just get yeah, it. Yeah, if Tom, if Tom, oh, can you, get, can you get it from the game? Yeah. Even in doubt. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I was about to give a shout out that would literally return nothing. I was thinking, I'll just pull up the show. Good thinking, Mike. Common white tea. That's uh, <laughs> now that the we've all been waiting for. It's <laughs> exactly the reward that we were looking for there. Uh, Tom, will you get the shout out up so we can? Uh, great. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, on the screen, you can't see. I got a quarter million credits. So, so who was the real winner? winner here? <laughs> Okay. Um, so right. uh, next up is we're going to take a have a quick peek at what's coming up in a future update. So first of all, there's blacklisting cars. Do you want to? Yes, absolutely. Do um, you want to drive around a little bit while we uh, while we chat about that? Okay. So um, yes, switch to the Devo or switch to one of the cars we're going to look at. Anyways, okay. So uh, about uh, blacklisting cars, which is kind of the the internal name for this. Um, we know, and the community obviously know, that there are some cars that are very, 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 very good at Rivals events and uh, online adventure. And we've been thinking about ways that we can uh, work with that and, and address that. And we don't want to change the cars because the track tool, for example, is built in the way that it's built because it's a fun experience. And the Bone Shaker as well. They're, they're designed to be experiences. But we recognize the fact that that can be disruptive when you're trying to be really competitive in a Rivals event, for example. So what we're doing is we're working up a system that will allow us to set a restricted car list for certain events, which will be Rivals and Online Adventure. And those cars will not be uh, available for use in those events. And we will delete leaderboard entries that were generated historically by those cars. And uh, that will remove like the worst offenders that uh, we've seen from Rivals and Online Adventure. Um, that's not unfortunately in this update because we're building it in a way that would allow us to 
be very specific, like only block the tractor in like B class if we needed to do that, or mm -hmm. B class and A class, but maybe leave it in the others if uh, if uh, that's not so much of a problem. And we'll be able to do that from uh, our servers, so we won't need to patch the game if, for example, we add in uh, more cars that possibly uh, end up being like really abusive in that kind of situation. So that update is coming. Uh, cool. As soon as we know more about that, we'll obviously share it in, in more detail. Show and if screen. people want to see a car blacklisted, they just tweet at you. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, any time of day or night, I'll tell you whether your car is. No, that's <laughs> not how we're implementing this. That's um, at Torben Ellett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, my phone is going mad. Uh, no, uh, so uh, you will be able to, uh, with a button press on the, uh, on the actual PI class for the uh, rivals, see a list of the cars that are restricted. And similarly, on a ranked and unranked adventure, you'll be able to press a button and see a list of cars mm -hmm. that are not available. They also won't appear in, they won't appear in, the, um, in the selectable car list. Cool. That, I mean, that last point absolutely makes sense. Yes, <laughs> otherwise it would be like, don't use these cars, but you could use these cars. <laughs> no. I'd imagine that would be the least that this feature would do. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, as soon as that is, uh, Closed out, the work's done and is ready to go. We'll talk about it and obviously show it on an upcoming stream. Cool. Uh, and the other thing, we're not going to dig too deeply into what exactly this is, but um, you know, you, you might want to hold on to your thoughts on points or indeed complete your extra thoughts on lives before our next live stream. Yes, uh, just have a, have a bit in the bank. Yes, I know that's good, good, good advice. Yeah. Um, Next up, we're going to dig through some updates and fixes. I'm going to have to read some of these out because they're quite specific. Um, so we have fixed an issue where side mirrors were not visible in the cockpit of the 1977 Ford Escort RS 1800. Great. How, how can um, fixed an issue where the 2013 Mercedes-Benz A45 AMG performance graph could go out of range whilst upgrading. Like, yikes. Oh, I fixed that. Oh, nice That's one. actually one for me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fixed an issue. We fixed an issue uh, where the displacement value for electric cars would show as uh, 999,999,999 on the pre-race stats screen, which is no good. Uh, fixed an issue where the daily challenges for Series 7 and 8 were not counting towards festival playlist progress, an issue that has affected me personally, so I'm it's glad to see we fixed that. Say back to 100% across yeah, the board. Yeah. Uh, and we have fixed an issue where brick challenges wouldn't complete if you were playing a seasonal event in co-op. And also, uh, we fixed an issue where the star card flares were not appearing for users in some weird circumstances. That was a particularly difficult bug for us to track down because it would not happen in a development environment. It could only happen in retail. So but it's, it's, I mean, it's because the kits that we dev on are different. Yeah, they're, straight they're, up. They're, like, in, in loads and loads of ways. Mm. <laughs> um, but they're not supposed. To, they're, they're, you're supposed to be able to set them to behave like a retail, mm. a retail kit. And there was some very weird quirk in them that was uh, preventing that from happening. All right. Um, there's a there's another fix uh, that we that I'd like to show off. Um, if uh, oh. I can like uh, bring this up and again remember what fingers are supposed to be doing, what here. So uh, if we go in, no, because we'll need to go to the festival to do this. Is I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some auctions. Is this is this is this finally it? After after That's after it. three long years of waiting since the initial introduction of the auction house to <laughs> Horizon. Yes, three three long games. Um, so uh, I've, I've been personally waiting for this issue for even longer than you guys have because I've been wanting this fixed since this, this, this uh, before Auction House even launched in Horizon Three. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do it, Tolman. Do it. Of course, so, there's going to be nothing on the Auction House because I know, right? It's, it's going it's <laughs> to be absolutely fantastic. Now, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking. Uh, so we were talking about how this is uh, this is the wrong kind of build. Oh, that'd be fine. Uh, Okay. These, so, these guys have seen a lot of this weird stuff before. So uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to check on some uh, some restrictions here. I'm going to say, okay, see if you can find. <laughs> go on. Uh, that car's A class stock, by the way. <laughs> so you're not going to find that. Now, no. Historically, when you B buttoned out, uh, this would all reset, and you'd have to go and put your instructions in all again, and then increment the bid ever so slightly. So anyone who has ever used the auction house will have no doubt found that issue and. Wondered why we would have designed it in such a way. Well, it wasn't really intentional. It was, no, just, it it was, was just way more tricky to fix than, <laughs> than you would have thought. Um, yes, this is uh, finally going to go in. Played us for two games and then an additional year of live, and we have fixed it. So. Yes, after only a year. 
and it was. Was there another fix on here? Um, I don't think it. Don't, it doesn't look like it made it in for this one. All right, I think it was it. a minor thing anyway. Mm. Um, okay, so that was just a, a, a minor thing, but it's it's like one of those things just niggles and niggles and niggles, and it always kind of rolls down the list of priorities. But finally, we found some time. So we was managed a to priority for me to open. Yes. yes. Um, well, it's done. So regular use of the auction. <laughs> it's about, I can see people in the chat saying, "Finally, it's about time." And thank you. So yes, <laughs> uh, it's very much. <laughs> Just about time. <laughs> yes, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> someone else saying sniping time. Not really <laughs> what we wanted to do that. Well, uh, anyway, uh, we have just around 10 minutes left. Uh, just enough time for us to take some questions from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when we're finished, don't go anywhere because right after us is the Fulton Monthly Stream coming with you, coming to you from Seattle, and our very own Matt Pickering is over there. So don't go anywhere when we're finished. Anyway, let's have a look at some of these questions. Uh, Rue Ready One is asking. Is the CCGT based off the CCR? Um, Straight to Chris. In terms of car terms, yeah, I think the carbon fiber monocoque is the same. Uh, as I said, the engine's similar but not supercharged and race built. The car itself's a race car, so a lot of the components will have been changed out on it. But yeah, the, the underpinnings or the monocoque uh, mm -hmm. are the same, I believe, yeah. Uh, another question for you, Chris. Uh, can we get some more police lights on more cars? It's not something we're actively looking at just now, but we can definitely look into it. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, that was a question from Crash Kid 3000 so I think he'd really appreciate it if you could uh, find the time. Next up is uh, Ross Bertron 3000. 3000. That's weird, isn't it? Um, hey, Tom and everyone. Any plans to bring more Rallycross cars to the game? Uh, I'm trying to think what's coming up. So in terms of Rallycross, I can't remember if there's any coming, but we do have a series next year planned with some nice rally cars in it. Nice, nice, into 2020. Yeah. So, Ross Patron 3000, by all means, uh, post on the forums and tell us which cars it is in specific, in particular you're looking for, and hopefully we can align with your wishes. Uh, this one doesn't have a name on it, which is a shame, but what is the 100% completion reward on the new story, Torben? Uh, that, would be the that would be the final car. Um, it, which would final be reward, yes. the final reward, oh, yeah, in fact, yeah. be the final car. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make my, my, my brain stop driving a Devo and talk about that, so I will give you this so I can answer <laughs> that. Um, it is the, it's a, it's a Koenigsegg. It's uh, the Agera RS with the, with the nonsense roof rack. You said nonsense about it six times on this stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've uh, really picked up that, uh, that anglicism since I moved here. Uh, okay, and Chris, what engine swaps are available in the CCGT? So I didn't set this car up, but I have a Funny feeling it's got a Koenigsegg 1 engine in it. Nice. Um, I think. Um, yeah, pretty sure it's that. And this one, I guess, is for you and me, Torben. Okay. Is there a chance we can have custom blueprint playground games? A lot of us enjoy playing playgrounds, but are bored of the same maps. Can you imagine playground games on the Lego map? Mm. So that isn't something we have lined up right now, no. but it is a cool idea. Uh, one that we can so would, would, would it, I mean, I guess it would need to be within an arena, right? It would need to be worked up to, to, to fit the same... I mean, let's not brainstorm the solution right here. Mm. Uh, but let's just assume that it's... We've got a, a whiteboard next to us. <laughs> yeah, just start <laughs> <have a> go. <laughs> sketching on the whiteboard. <laughs> uh, it's a cool idea. It's one that, it's one that we could definitely think mm. about, yeah. Uh, but no, no, we have no plans for anything like that right now. This one is from uh, Pre the DJ. Uh, how about using Fortathon points to unlock access to daily challenges? Okay. So, like, uh, like get so he says advanced early, access to them. Uh, yeah, he says access to daily challenges earlier. Uh, I guess maybe you're right, also right, right, to right. reinvigorate one you've missed from a previous week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's again not not anything we have plans for at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as I said earlier, though, we do have some plans for things you can do with your thoughts on points very soon. Mm. Watch this space in about four weeks' time. Um, but not specifically for that one to access challenges, but cool idea. Uh, Grip Supra. Uh, will more basic cars like the Ford Focus SE and the Subaru WRX show up in FH4 in the future? Probably wouldn't call them basic. That's a bit mean, but uh, Chris. The WRX <laughs> Subaru isn't exactly basic. That's actually a great car. Um, but, I mean, compared to this, do you mean, I think million. you mean normal cars that you know, norm, normal car lovers own, so rather than this. Uh, there is a series plan next year that is not quite your normal Ford Focuses, but more down to earth, shall we say, cars. Mm. Um, uh, and I think mainly kind of weird British cult things. Um, so watch out for that. Sweet. 
Ah, here's one we can answer. Uh, hey Tom, when are we going to see the Rimac C2 again? Can we uh, bring up the uh, festival playlist? Robin doesn't have that in his, in his head, but he'll go check. Yes, I do not remember it in my head, no, but we will go and we will see it here. Because it is in festival playlist, uh, this series. So, oh, there we go, Autumn, the Holy Trinity. Ah, cool. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a really cool trial as well. So there you go. Uh, autumn trial event, uh, Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, probably going to need one of the... No, you could get a rental, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, this one is from uh, Tujoyo Moto... Tomato Moto? Um, is the Green Man suit coming back anytime soon? Uh... It's not in this update. Uh, no, it's not in this update, but I mean, who, who knows? We. Hey, sure, we'll put it in the next one. There you go. Uh, Tojo sure. Yamoto To. Uh, Torben promises he'll put it in the next update for you. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I guess I should write that down then. <laughs> um, yeah. Um... <laughs> See, it's that easy. Uh, funk Metal. <laughs> Any update on Balancing the Bone Shaker and Tractor for online races? We covered that uh, a mm -hmm. little earlier, but yes, in the next update, we should have a fix for that. Uh, you know how these things go. Uh, it'll probably be like three updates or something. But yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully next hey. update. <laughs> yes. I mean, we'll, 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 we'll keep you posted on, on how it's moving forward. Okay, this one's quite a long one, and this will probably be our last question as well, because then we're going to run out of time. Um, oh, actually, there's only two questions left, so I'll do, I'll do both of these. Uh, hey, Tom. Can the photo mode community please have a no-clip camera to give us more freedom in Forza Vista and normal photo mode? Mm. The current setup is restricting us. Now, such a toggleable feature would allow for some great close-ups and engine shots. Mm. Have we got any new photo mode changes planned? Don't have anything planned, but I know our debug camera can do that, so it doesn't seem like it will be impossible. There we go. Not impossible. There you go, Peb. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an impossible thing, and therefore it is a thing that may well happen in a future update. And um, finally, uh, do you change the garage limit? Chris? So I, uh, I don't personally. Um, I can say we are having some discussions behind the scenes on if we need to up it again and how we'd go about doing that. It's quite a risky thing for us to do, so we... We, we look into it heavily and take uh, look at all the risks before we uh, actually do that one. But we yes. are looking at it. Yeah, each time we've done that, it is actually a, a huge amount of work and it's very risky and risks corrupting everybody's saved data. So it's something we have to uh, mm. be very, very careful with, unfortunately. Uh, it's, not as, it's not the case of just increasing the number from whatever it is in the 700 to, to, uh, to a bigger number. Yeah. Um, ah. Thank you. Uh, so I have the, I, before we go, I have the share code for that route that we played, which is, get your pen and paper ready, um, <laughs> 107-269-529. That's 107-269-529. You can go check out that route, or indeed you can wait until the seasonal championship that, that, that it's in at some point. In, in oh, Tom could paste it into chat. Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, that is, uh, that is us. Uh, we have run out of time, unfortunately, so I'm going to hand you guys over to the Forza Monthly Stream over in Seattle, where Brian and Matt will give you all the latest updates on everything else coming in Forza Horizon 4. Another look at this Horizon story, and who knows what else. I'm sure there's other cool stuff. Uh, they haven't sent me a list, but I'm sure it's really good. Um, uh, I've been Mike Brown. This is Chris Wells, and this is Torben Ellett. Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah, take care, guys. Play it on Xbox One.